My bestie cheated on her man, so I went and I told him. This Clemens is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. After she told me that she had been cheating on her boyfriend with that trans guy, the one that she tried to set me up on a date with, I couldn't believe it. So I started questioning her. I asked her when they met, how long they've been seeing each other, and that's when she told me that she's been cheating on her boyfriend for the entirety of their relationship. A week after she became his girlfriend, she started hooking up with the other guy. I told her that she was not right for doing what she was doing. If you're wondering why I'm so upset at her for cheating on her man, let me tell you why. Her boyfriend is completely devoted to her. As soon as he's finished at work, he tries to go see her every single day. He's constantly texting her throughout the day. He even calls her at night just to say goodbye. And because he started helping her out with the rent, she's able to live by herself without roommates. He also started paying for her car insurance and her cell phone bill. He even offered to pay for her nails. I've met some shitty ass men in my life and he is not one of them. That's when I told her that what she was doing was fucked up and she needed to stop. When she got up in my face and told me that I needed to stay out of her business. She had never spoken to me like that or even gotten in my face like that before. Something is up with her and I can't put my finger on it. When I told her she was being disrespectful to me and her boyfriend, she almost came at me. But she stopped herself, thank God. I went straight over to her boyfriend's job and told him everything. I don't think it's fair that he needs to be paying for her bills or treating her like a queen. While she's running around with another dude, no thank you. When I told him, he started to cry. He asked me if I was 1000% sure and I said yes because she had just confessed it to me. And now I have bigger problems. He went and broke up with her and now my bestie's coming at me. He's getting people to bully me online. She even had her brother follow me for an entire day. When I tried to reach out, she blocked me. She actually broke one of my car windows. What the heck should I do? Did I do wrong or was I right? My best friend cheated on her man, so I went and I told him. I the asshole for doing that? This Clemens is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My bestie's always been a bitch. She does whatever she wants, whenever she wants. And literally nobody can tell her otherwise. Now her and I usually get along all the time. My bestie has a bad temper on her. She can be very judgmental and every time she starts telling me what to do or what I shouldn't do, I would just do it. But about a year ago, I started defending myself and talking back. And she does not like this. If she's this way with me, can you imagine how she's with her man? She controls every single aspect of the relationship. She even tells him when he can go to the gym, who he can be friends with, where he can go by himself. I mean, it's unbelievable that she's been able to retain this man. The problem is that he's just so in love with her. You see, he's like a seven and she's like a nine, but he's a really good guy and she's taken advantage of that. A little while ago, she pressured me into going on a double date and the guy she set me up with was a trans man. He didn't even have the decency to tell me when I got there. I was done and actually couldn't speak. After the date, my bestie confessed that she had hooked up with a trans guy. How dare she do that to her man? Started seeing a side of my bestie I don't like. So I took matters into my own hands go to part two so why would i give a fuck what a dumb ass rat thinks about me i don't care everything i say is right everything i say is 100 percent true and accurate so therefore why would i give a fuck what a dumb fuck thinks of me that's just how i am that's how i've always my boyfriend's crazy ex fondled me disclaimer is not my story time let's let him on instagram this whole nightmare started six months ago. I met this cute guy at my job. I'm a manager at a cafe and I'm there all day long. This cute boy started coming in and of course I noticed him right away. Now I'm in the process of trying to buy this cafe because I really want to own it and make it better than what it is. One day he just started talking to me out of nowhere. And we spoke for about four hours. Even after the cafe closed, he stayed there and helped me close it. I told him about all the plans I had to make the cafe better and he started coming to the cafe every single day. Fast forward a few weeks, we go on our first date. And fast forward a couple of months, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. But at this point, it was already too late because this is when he decides to tell me that he's got a crazy ex. She's a bodybuilder, literally looks like a man, like a scary jacked up guy. She starts coming into the cafe out of nowhere. The thing is, I didn't know who she was. I just knew the scary muscular woman would come in all the time and just stare at me. And when I told him about this, his face turned white. That's when he tells me, oh my gosh, I think that's my ex. I describe him to her and her tattoos and he's like, yep, that's her. That's when he told me I needed to hire security. But I refused to because I didn't think she was going to do anything crazy. After closing up the cafe, I walked to my car and there she was. Without saying a word, she punches me in the stomach. Part two is that my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend molested me. This Clemens is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. This woman punches me in the stomach. Now let me remind you how big and muscular she is. She's like triple the size of me, pure muscle. She hit me so hard, I actually stayed on the ground for about 15 minutes just trying to catch my breath. When I looked up, she was gone. I called my boyfriend and he came with his best friend. That's when they told me that I seriously needed to get security and that he would walk me to my car every single night after closing my cafe. That very night, I broke up with him. There was absolutely no way I wanted this kind of drama in my life. I work almost all day. I do not have time for this. When I broke up with him, he said he understood but that he would fight for me. And this is when things just got even worse. Instead of backing off, his crazy muscular ex started coming around. Let's name her Jackie. Jackie would come to my cafe at least once a week. Whenever she tried to come in, I'd have one of my employees lock the door. If she couldn't come in, she would just stare at me through the window. This is when I started getting threatening messages. I also started getting threatening emails. This is where I messed up. I closed the cafe one night by myself. When I walked to my car thinking nothing would happen. This is when I hear footsteps right behind me as I approach my car and a guy grabbed me from behind, pushed me up against my car and started manhandling.
cuddling me. He touched me everywhere. I screamed so loud he actually ran away, but I knew it was her. He tried to put her fingers in there. Part three is up. My boyfriend's ex-girlfriend molested me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. Send me an Instagram. After she waited for me to finish my job, she came up behind me, pushed me into my car, and started fondling me. Literally touched me everywhere. You guys, I started crying here because I haven't done colorful makeup in so long. I actually started feeling like myself again. Back to the story. Luckily, I did not freeze. I physically pushed against her body and just started yelling at the top of my lungs. And she ran away. And you want to know how I know it was her? Number one, I could feel a very muscular body behind me. And number two, I smelled her perfume. I remember I told you guys that she'd come into the cafe several times before. I knew it was her smell because she would pour perfume on herself. My boyfriend knew that she did this because she always went to the gym and was afraid of smelling bad. I got straight into my car and drove to the police station. Of course, I reported her. Police were able to recover footage from the parking garage and that's when they could see a really big muscular person behind me. It was all caught on camera. I ended up breaking up with him. This is just way too much. He should have warned me that he had a stalker and that she was crazy. Anyway, the police went to look for her and guess what? They couldn't find her. She apparently moved to a different country. Remember in part one I told you I was celibate? I will never date again. Literally never. He wants me back but I keep saying no. Oh yeah and I'm officially a business owner. The cafe is doing so well. Should I take him back or should I just leave it? I paid a random guy to stalk me to get my boyfriend jealous. This is not my story time. I was sending me an Instagram. I repeat this is not my story time. My boyfriend's already tried to break up with me four times this month, so I needed to think of a plan to make him jealous so that he could want to be with me. Here's a little backstory on how we met. He and I both come from the same country, and we actually lived in the same neighborhood. His parents moved to the U.S., and then my parents moved to the U.S. So when we got there, luckily we knew his family, and it was really nice because my parents had somebody they could rely on. Well, can you probably guess? I had the biggest crush with him. I was literally in love with him from the time I met him when we were back in our country. When we would play as kids, I was like 10. But when we moved to the States, I was 16. So I was a little bit more grown up. I was hoping that he would see me and fall in love with me at first sight, but unfortunately it didn't happen like that. Instead, I waited until we were in college. I had a full glow up at this point. I grew out my hair and I stopped coloring it blonde. I got myself a skincare routine and I just decided to dress more feminine. I was 20 years old. I looked like a whole different person and I looked like a woman. He had been traveling for about a year and finally he came back. And the day he came back, our parents decided to have dinner together. And when he saw me again for the first time, he actually did a double take. It's like he almost didn't recognize who I was. Throughout the dinner, he kept staring at me and and finally, at the end of the night, I told him that I liked him. This is when he told me that he had never thought of me that way. And I asked him if we could just hang out for the week. He said yes. And by the end of the week, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And this is where I messed up. I started becoming really jealous and controlling. I realized that he had a lot of girlfriends and he just always was hanging out with his friends. He was always texting his friend group. And I just felt like he wasn't giving me enough attention. So I told him that he needed to spend more time with me and less time with his friends. And he agreed. One night while he was taking a nap, I installed an app on his phone that lets me track him. The app also forwards all of his messages over to my phone. This just made me feel better about the relationship. But then he started accusing me of being controlling. I guess me telling him to hang out with me more and less with his friends was not good. And also I told him to stop talking to his girlfriends. Then he broke up with me and I was devastated. Now look, yes, I was a little bit jealous and controlling, but I mean, come on, all relationships are like that. So I came up with a plan. I went up to this random guy in my college and I told him that if he stalked me, I would pay him $100 a week. I just wanted him to send me text messages, emails, and pictures of myself. Like he was following me around and he would just like take a picture and then send it to me. And then I started forwarding all of that to my ex. And it actually started to work. He said that he wanted to protect me. So he started spending more time with me. He would always make sure that I got home safe. Then I told him that my stalker spoke to me and that he was actually cute. And that maybe I should just date my stalker instead of him. He drove all the way to my house and asked me to be his girlfriend again. Everything was okay for a little bit, but then I started getting jealous again. Like I said, he's tried to break up with me four times this month. So I told him that my stalker came back. I kind of feel bad for lying about the stalker. I don't want him to break up with me. Am I crazy for doing this? What do you think? My life has been ruined by war. Disclaimer, thank you to Rosanna for sharing her story with us. I do not support war. I support humans who are suffering. And I am here to tell their stories. I'm Rosanna and I'm 27 years old. My husband Rami is 29 and we have a three-year-old child. My husband's name is Rami and he's 29 years old. We have a three-year-old child and his name is Ziad. We used to live a quiet life in Gaza City. The past months have been treacherous for my family and I. Because of the ongoing war in Gaza, we have lost everything. We've been deprived of our basic human needs. Clean water, adequate food, and the ability to move freely. Miserable conditions have affected my son's health. He's lost so much weight and his psychological condition has deteriorated. We have no source of income because of the war. It is extremely expensive to move or to even buy basic needs. My husband unfortunately lost a job and is no longer able to continue his profession. My biggest concern as a mother is my son's health. The scarcity of clean water and nutritious food have impacted his health and I have limited options. Our only possible way to survive is to evacuate through Egypt, but in order to move we need around five to seven thousand dollars each. This is a call for help and a cry for humanity. Any small amount that you can donate 
donate will make a great impact. Rosanna's GoFundMe is going to be linked in my bio. If you have anything, even a dollar will help. If you guys want me to do someone's story, please let me know in the comments. Or if you have your own, just send it to me through Instagram. I hope you guys are all safe out there and I love you guys. Bye. I found my best friend's husband on Tinder, and when I told her, she broke up with me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. I have a pretty good relationship with my best friend. We're able to be honest with each other, but about certain things, I just can't talk to her. She's very, very snarky. She thinks she's very funny. So when I tell her sometimes about my deepest, darkest secrets or the problems I'm having in my marriage, weeks later, she'll put her foot in her mouth and bring it up in front of other people. I have called her out for it, but she still doesn't understand why it would bother me that she's bringing up private things that I've told her in the past. When she tells me all of her private problems, I will never repeat them to anybody else. That's what best friends are for. She has a history of making mean jokes, but because she's naturally abrasive, she doesn't realize she's being mean. For example, sometimes she makes fun of my weight. She knows I've been trying to lose weight for five years and I finally got on Ozempic. Only then did I actually start to lose weight. This is when she started calling me an Ozempic baby. I kind of laughed it off and my husband did too, but then my husband called her out for it. And when he did, she's like, oh my gosh, you guys have no sense of humor. But this is what happened with her husband. My husband actually works for Tinder and he asked me to download the app to look at some things. He kind of uses me like his guinea pig. It's actually pretty fun and we do it together on the couch. As we're scrolling through the app, we see a very familiar picture. It happens to be my best friend's husband. When we click into the profile, he's posting pictures that he's literally taken with her at restaurants. By the way, my husband and I have a theory that he only married her because of her money. She comes from a really wealthy family and he's way better looking than she is. And this just gets even worse. Go to part two. I found my bestie's husband on Tinder, and when I told her about it, she broke up with me. This claim is, this is not my story time, it's going to be on Instagram. Once my husband and I see the account, he goes on his work laptop and confirms that it's actually his account. My husband and I decided that I just needed to tell her. Now, my best friend is notorious for being very, very dramatic, so I was kind of not wanting to tell her, but I knew I had to. Okay, and a little side note. In part one, I said that she's snarky and she has foot-in-the-mouth syndrome, and that she sometimes spills my secrets. So you're probably wondering why I would be best friends with her, but she's always been there for me. So I invite her out to a cafe the next morning, and as soon as we sit down, I start to cry. She comes over to comfort me, but I couldn't actually get the words out of my mouth, so I just pulled out my phone and showed her her husband's Tinder account. That's when she says, why are you showing this to me? And I told her I thought you'd want to know the truth. Then the most bizarre thing happened. She began to list off all the reasons I'm envious of her, that I've always wanted her life, I envy her relationship with her perfect husband, that I envy her money, and that I wish I was as skinny as she is. But I defended myself quickly. I told her that of course I didn't feel those things, and that all I wanted to do was have her back and show her her husband's tinder account that's when she started telling me that even though her husband cheats on her doesn't mean that i'm better than her that my relationship with my husband is better this is when i found out through another friend that she knew he had been cheating on her for two months on tinder that she's so desperate to keep him happy that she just ignores it and she pays for all of his bills because i know for a fact this man does not work she told my friend group that my husband and i are envious and that we're starting to make up rumors about her husband cheating and now we're the outcasts what should i do I walked in on my husband getting breastfed by his mother on our wedding. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. Send me on Instagram. All of this happened on our wedding day. But three weeks before the wedding, the weirdest thing happened. Literally, nobody prepares you for how stressful planning a wedding is. Be honest, it's been the worst time of my life, and I'm 22. My husband is 25. We met three years ago traveling, and we happened to be from the same city while traveling. It was crazy. We thought it was meant to be. We were inseparable from the first day we met. We met each other's parents a week after we met each other. We integrated into each other's families flawlessly. We have the same values and morals. So moving Moving in together was the logical next step, and it happened super quick. A month after meeting, we moved in together. He proposed to me almost a year ago. He comes from a super rich family. My family lives comfortably, but his parents are millionaires. So his mom hired a wedding planner, which is amazing because it's totally taken the stress off of us. Now for the wedding planning, we usually meet once a week with the wedding planner, and his mom always comes with us. On one of these meetings, I wasn't able to attend, so my husband and his mom met together. I knew that they were going to get lunch afterwards, so I decided to surprise them. Instead of being at the restaurant they said they were going to be in, they were in the parking lot. I could see their car. Okay, now one thing about my mother-in-law, she always wears low-cut shirts. Now she's got great boobs, so I understand why. As I'm approaching the car, I can see my husband leaning into his mom's side. He's in the driver's seat, he's in the passenger. I thought, oh sweet, he has his head on her shoulder. But as I got closer, I realized his head was not on her shoulder. It was lower than that. As soon as I knock on the window, they both jump up. That's when out of the corner of my eye, I see her adjusting her top, her very low-cut top. And the first thing I thought was, wouldn't it be funny if he was breastfeeding? And my mother-in-law accused me of spying on them. I'm about to get on a flight, part two will be up in three hours. I walked in on my husband getting breastfed by his mother on her wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. And this is part two. After the car incident, she accused me of spying on them. I had walked up to the car where they were parked and I saw his head really close to her chest and her trying to adjust her top really quickly. I said I was definitely not trying to spy on them and that I just saw their car parked there. 
But of course, my husband tried to play it all off. He said that his head was hurting and that he was just resting on her shoulder. But the problem is, I couldn't get it out of my head. The way she was adjusting her top, it was so weird. And her accusing me of spying on them? Up until this point, my mother-in-law was always very cool with me. So for her to suddenly turn on me like this, I knew something was up. So later that night, I asked my husband what was going on. And of course, he said that I had scared them and that she was just reacting off of that. From this day on, I kept noticing all of her tops were super low cut. And like I said in part one, yes, she has great boobs, but now I was thinking she was wearing them for a different reason. This is when I also started noticing that she never wore a bra. Fast forward to our wedding day, we're at the church. My sister was the maid of honor and she was doing a great job at keeping me calm. I felt really stressed and I just felt weird about the whole thing with my mother-in-law. So I decided to go look for her and talk to her. This is when I was told she was with my husband at the time my fiance. So I go to his dressing room, I knock on the door, but I don't hear anybody answer. So I decide to just walk in. This is when I see my mother-in-law's dress all the way down to her waist and my husband latched on to her boob and she was holding onto him like a baby. That's when she yells at me to just get out. So I did. I was shocked and repulsed. As soon as I closed the door behind me, I thought, hell no, confront them now. I walked back in and he's telling her to put her dress on and he's trying to run after me. I told him no need. This is when she told me that this was none of my business and that this was a family thing. Then my fiance explained that he's been breastfeeding for all this time. He's in his late 30s and he's still breastfeeding. And that it's just a way for him and his mom to stay close. First off, how is she still making breast milk? Then she said the craziest thing ever. She said that they wouldn't make me sign a prenup if I didn't tell their secret. Like I told you guys, they are millionaires. Up until this point, nobody had brought up a prenup. But I didn't care about that. I told her that I didn't want to go through with the wedding. Then they talked me off the ledge and promised me that they wouldn't do it again. She explained that this keeps her young. It's like her fountain of youth and that this is her way of making her children strong, virile, and successful. They were able to calm me down because I was freaking out. We went through with the wedding, but things are just not the same for me. Is this really none of my business? Am I missing something? Is this normal? Or am I overreacting by wanting to get a divorce? I can't get that image out of my head. What should I do? Story time about how my best friend and boyfriend slept with each other. So a little background information, I was 16 and in 10th grade. So this whole thing like started two years ago whenever my crush asked me on a date and then blah, 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 we became official. And I decided to introduce him to my best friend, Vivian. And we're gonna call my boyfriend, Louise. So one day we're all in my room watching a movie and I went to go and grab some snacks, but I left the door open because I wanted to see what was happening in the movie. And while I'm in the kitchen, I see Louise staring at Vivian. Like I was low-key weirded out because why are you doing that? Anyway, so then I went into the room and I felt this like weird tension between them. So I stopped inviting my best friend to come over whenever we would hang out. And she got super mad at me for this. And Vivi and I would always like pull pranks on each other. So the one day I call up her boyfriend, John, and I'm like, oh, we should say that we like each other. So we did and she didn't care, which maybe she just didn't think the prank was funny, but it was sus. So the next day I stop over at Vivian's house and she doesn't answer. Like for part two. Part two about how I caught my boyfriend and my best friend sleeping together. So like I said, I kind of felt bad for this prank. So I went over to her house the next day and I knock on the door and she doesn't answer. So I go around to the back door of her house and nobody was answering. So I look through the window because the cars were there. And that's whenever I see her and my boyfriend doing it. Yup. So obviously I was pissed off and I happened to have my boyfriend's house key. So I went to the Dollar Tree and bought like 50 different nail polishes. And as you could probably guess, I went to his house and put nail polish all over his shit, his clothes, his shoes, everything, even his walls. When I left, I asked John if we could meet and talk and Wednesday we decided to confront them. And Louise and Vivian said that they had been dating secretly behind our backs way before me and Louise even started dating. There really is no moral to this story, to be honest. It's just that girls need to start following girl code more and not being fake. Story time, absence does make the heart grow fonder. So a little background information. I was 18 years old and I had just graduated high school and I had been in a situation ship with this guy for probably six months. And trust me, I know six months is a long time, but both of our lives were super busy and he just wasn't ready to commit. And before you say it, yes, we already had 20 talks about how since we're doing relationship things, we should just be in a relationship. But of course it was his way or the highway. So finally the one day we're hanging out and a girl FaceTimes him. And I acted like I didn't see it, but I knew that as soon as he went to the bathroom, I was checking that phone fast forward he goes to the bathroom i go on the phone and i see that he's been texting about meeting up with this girl for the past few weeks so i confront him about it and i'm like hey this isn't gonna work and he's like we're not even dating why are you mad and i was like okay fine you're right we're not dating so get out of my house so after that he didn't call or text me for a month which i was super sad about but then again it was kind of my fault but i refused to break no contact because i was not about to be disrespected again well after a month he reaches out telling me that he's ready for a relationship with me and he doesn't want any other girl and that was five years ago now we're married with kids
Part three about how my coworker cheated on her husband with my boyfriend. So like I said, she DMs him not even like two seconds later saying, hey, with a bunch of whys, and we all know what that means. It's flirty. But she didn't answer him, so she kept spamming him. So fast forward, after him and I were dating for seven months, we started growing apart like we would spend hours without talking to each other. We stopped going out to the point where it was causing huge fights. And then a week later, a rumor starts going around that he and my coworker Jamie slept together. I found this hard to believe because I feel like people were just trying to break us up. But unfortunately, these rumors were true because I did receive some pictures of evidence of it actually happening. So obviously, this caused me to get into a fight with them because I confronted them about it. And fast forward, in the end, both of them were fired and they aren't together anymore, which isn't a surprise. And I don't know what's going on with her and her husband, but whenever he found out, he stormed into the hotel and made a huge scene, as anyone probably would. And now they're both banned from even entering the hotel. Part two about how my coworker cheated on her husband with my boyfriend. Anyways, like I said, we started talking and he introduced me to his friends, his family, and we would hang out constantly. And things got pretty serious. Eventually, we only were exclusively talking to each other. Fast forward about three months later, the news got around about him and I. And I vividly remember that some of the girls were annoyed that him and I were together, which is understandable because he was hot AF. But the person who was most mad was Jamie. And it was very obvious. She constantly made comments towards me about us. She would be like, oh, you two shouldn't be hanging around each other. You guys aren't going to look professional. All the girls are going to spread rumors. Like, girl, bye. You're 28 years old with a kid and a husband. Get a fucking life. And then whenever him and I would sit together at lunch, she would look at us with these nasty looks. Well, fast forward, the one night him and I are hanging out, and then eventually she follows him on all social medias. But I didn't care, though, because I thought he was loyal. After my boyfriend accepts it, not even three seconds later, she DMs him saying, hey, with a bunch of whys, like for part three. Story time about how I found out that my coworker was cheating on her husband with my boyfriend. So a little background information. From 2022 to 2023, I worked as a receptionist at this hotel. And I was pretty good friends with one of my coworkers who was kind of older than me. I was 19 and at the time she was about 28 years old. And we're going to call her Jamie. Jamie seemed like a very professional woman. Like she would hardly get into drama and everybody loved her at work. And we were all super thankful to have her because she was also a really good worker. Now, Jamie was married and she had a son who was about three years old. And she would always brag about how her husband treated her so well. Which was weird because, um, girl, if he treated you well, why did you cheat on him? Be so for real. Anyway, so there was this guy who was working in the dining room area. And he was extremely fine. Like, when I tell you every girl wanted to get with him, every girl wanted to get with him. But somehow, him and I clicked almost instantly. Fast forward a month, him and I start talking to each other. He even introduced me to his family. Like for part two. Story time about why you shouldn't always trust people on the internet. So a little background information, I was 14 years old and a freshman in high school, and my friend had recently found a boyfriend on this one app where you can make friends online. So I decided to make an account and I posted a few pictures of myself. After about a week of having the app, some guy swiped right on me and I accepted. If I'm being honest, this was literally like Tinder for kids. Anyways, we started talking and his name was Aaron, and we became best friends almost instantly. We had this weird relationship where we would make fun of each other, but it was like in a loving way. Well, eventually after some drama at school happened, my mom went through my phone and deleted the app. And I got grounded for a good two to three months. Finally, after I was ungrounded, I went and I found Aaron's Instagram account. And we started talking again. And our conversation started to get deeper. The one night I was telling him about people at school were bullying me and stuff. And slut shaming me, even though I had never done anything with anyone. And then this man literally says, oh, well, we should do the nasty. Like, bro, did you not hear anything I just said? Anyways, like for part two. Part two about why you shouldn't always trust people on the internet. So like I said, I opened up to him about how people were treating me in school. And then he says that we should do the nasty. And so for his birthday, I snuck out of my house to meet up with him and wish him a happy birthday. And obviously I was hesitant to do anything with him because, yeah, I liked him. But I still knew in the back of my head that this was not morally correct. And, um, what else? Well, very, I don't know, against the law. But we did it and it was the worst mistake. After this, he just literally used me for hookups. And then his friend got involved and they started treating me as an object, which really screwed with my mental health. Like they would text me and say, oh, let's, you know what? And if I said no, they would ghost me or mentally like, you know, mess with me. After almost a year of this bullshit, I dropped them. And by the way, this guy was 25. Moral of the story, be very aware and trust your gut. If you feel like someone might be trying to take advantage of you, you should probably not speak to them.
How does the new Summer Friday iced coffee lip balm compares to the vanilla ones? You know what? That is something I would like to know myself. And to find these, I literally had to go around my house and check the pockets of every single sweatshirt, sweatpants, robe, anything you could think of because I always carry them around. Anyway, so here we have iced coffee. And here's what it looks like on my lips. Here we have just like regular vanilla. It's pretty much just clear. And here's what it looks like on my lips. This one I think is going to be the closest. This is the vanilla beige. Here's vanilla beige. It's pretty much a warmer version of the iced coffee. And here's what it looks like on the lips. I still think out of the three, the iced coffee one is my favorite. Because it has like that beautiful nude cool undertone. Do a full face of products that have multi-purpose. I'm actually shocked that I was able to find products for a full face of makeup. But let's get into it. Okay, for the primer, we're going to start off with the Beauty Blender Boost 4-in-1 Firming Peptide Setting Spray. What's the 4-in-1? Oh, oh, okay. Sets makeup, plumps skin, blurs pores, reduces shine. I think we could use this as a primer, right? Because it's like 4-in-1. This smells delicious. For foundation, we're going to go in with this Dior Backstage. And it is multi-purpose because on the back it says face and body foundation. And it just exploded everywhere. And I got it on my blanket. Why does micellar water get rid of foundation on my face but not on my clothes? Make it make sense. Anyway, this Dior foundation is literally one of my all-time favorite foundations ever. For concealer, we're gonna go in with this Merit, like, oh, hello? Why does my makeup literally hate me today? Anyway, this is like an all-over stick. You could use it as a concealer, as a foundation, like literally whatever you want to use it as, you can use it as that. For bronzer, we have this like pencil from Lip Tinted and you could use it for lips, eyes, and cheeks. This one is in shade Grounded. It also makes a beautiful lip liner. And it blends out pretty good. Okay, the color is beautiful. For blush, I have these Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek Sticks. First, I'm gonna go in with shade Perk. I'm actually gonna apply it on the brush and then onto my face. They're very like light and dewy, but very pretty. And I'm also gonna go in with shade Dash. To set my face, there was only one powder that I could find and this is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder. Once again, it's for your face and body, so it is technically multi-use. The finish it gives my skin is unlike any other. Now, because I need a little bit more blush, I'm gonna go in with this milk like jelly things and you could use these for your lips and cheeks. To add some glow, we're gonna go in with the Forever Glow by Dior and on the back it says multi-usage. So I guess you could use this as whatever you please. I'm just gonna apply it with a beauty blender. For brows, I'm just gonna use my regular brow pencils, but you just don't look, okay? Okay, for the eyes, I have something so fun planned, but for that, I'll see you part two. You should do makeup that you hate, but love the packaging. I actually didn't think I was gonna find that many products for this video, but I did, so let's get into it. First, we're gonna start off with this Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm Powder. Okay, the packaging of this is so cute. First of all, this color, 10 out of 10. Second of all, it has a built-in like little spoon holder. Like, come on. Now, I think I don't like this product because I don't understand like the point of this. It's tinted, but blurring, and I just, I'm confused. I just don't know if it's supposed to be like a primer of sorts or foundation or what this is. But beyond that, personally, I feel like it feels super heavy on my skin. Like even this light layer already kind of feels heavy. And it has that silicone texture that I do not like. Now for our foundation, we're going to go in with this Rose Ink Luminous Tinted Serum. The packaging is so chic. And it looks fun with like all of these little bubbles, but the product itself, like... It looks as if you're putting absolutely nothing onto your skin. And even before that, but it's just way too light coverage. You might as well just use a tinted sunscreen at this point. And even then, I feel like you would have more coverage than with this. Oh, that is white. Okay, I actually have to add a little bit of tinted sunscreen because uh, this is going to be a disaster if I don't. Just for the color. No, but like, what is this? What is this? I like already hate the way my skin looks. 
For my concealer, we're gonna go in with YSL All Hours. And I feel like just the YSL logo is already iconic in itself. Don't like this concealer because it's way too sheer. Like once you blend it out, it kind of just disappears. You see what I mean? My whole face is kind of giving a whole lot of nothing. Okay, for cream bronzer, this one I don't hate. I'm just, I just know I'm not gonna reach for this one often. It is the new Makeup Mario Bronzing and Shaping Serum. Okay, I was about to be like, it's very sheer for a bronzer. It's kind of like a serum and it's literally named as a serum. I just don't like serum bronzers. Like they almost do nothing and I want my skin bronzed. But the packaging innovation here, because we have a doe food applicator and we have a pump. That is genius. This is going to be like the ultimate no makeup makeup look. For our blush, we're going to go in with this one from NARS in shade Orgasm. Now this, I love the packaging, but this specific like blush stick that NARS made is too dry. And it's also way too expensive for what it is. I'm pretty sure it was like over $40. And like, where, where is the pigment? Hello? Anybody? Anybody? And then if you swipe it onto your skin, it's still a whole lot of nothing. And it also picks up the foundation. All right, we're about halfway done. I will see you in part of the rest. Do a full face of makeup, but you can't use a product meant for that step you're doing. I feel like I can make it work. Okay, so for the primer, we're gonna go in with the SMAC Hyper Real Serumizer. I honestly don't know if this like counts because some people use it as a primer already, but I feel like I use it as a serum and in this step, we're using it as a primer. I don't, I don't know. Now for our foundation, you guessed it, we're gonna use concealer. This is a concealer from Joa Beauty and because it's a serum concealer, I'm hoping it, oh fuck, that's so light. Okay, erase that. I'm gonna go in with this one from Lancome. Wait, this actually looks so good. Uh, wow. Now for our concealer, we're gonna go in with this Hourglass foundation stick. This is probably the most full coverage foundation I own, so I think it's gonna be perfect for our concealer. Okay, for our bronzer, this could go south, but I'm thinking of taking this About Face Fluid Eye Paints. So it's like a liquid eyeshadow and using this as bronzer. I feel like I'm gonna have to work in sections and super fast so it doesn't dry out. Okay, why did that blend out so well and it's looking so pretty? That's kind of honestly almost concerning. Like I don't know if it actually looks this good or I'm just delusional. For blush, I'm gonna go in with this Peripera Ink Tint Serum. This is like for your lips. I'm telling you right now, I am so scared because I swatched it on my hand and it was so bright. Oh gosh. Okay. Wait, it's actually blending out so good. Now to set my face, I'm gonna use a powder foundation because technically powder foundation shouldn't be your setting powder. Or at the very least, it's not what it's meant for. Okay, the skin is looking so good. Okay, we're about halfway done. I will see you in Patricia's dress. Do the opposite now. Do makeup with just twists. I have it all here, so let's get into it. First, for our like primer slash sunscreen, we're gonna go in with Kosas uh, Dream Beam and um, Glow Hub Baby Beam. We're clearly gonna be beaming today. And as you can see, this one's a twist. And so is this one. And I just kind of like mix them together. And blending it out with a brush. For our foundation, we're gonna go in with the Ilias Super Serum Skin Tint. I think I'm going for a glowy look today. And once again, it is a twist. The shade match, are we serious? For concealer, we're gonna go in with Makeup by Mario. For cream bronzer, we have e.l.f. Halo Glow. I love this bronzer, but the packaging gets so freaking dirty. For cream blush, we're gonna use the new Huda Beauty blushes. Okay, I just applied this blush and I filmed like a whole video on reviewing these and it is looking stunning. Now we're moving on to powder. We're gonna go in with this uh, Makeup Forever powder. And that was a twist in case you didn't notice. Okay, we are gonna have to skip bronzer because I couldn't find a powder bronzer that has like a twist on it. But I did find a blush with a twist. It's from Jill Stewart and you twist the top open and then you twist it inside and you have this little puff or whatever the fuck 
and then you get the product out and kind of just like pet your face with this and the product is like in there it's like powder i'm also going to use a little bit of <laughs> that scares the living shit out of me anyway i'm also going to go in with a little bit of this like coral shade all right we're about halfway done i will see you in pretty the rest welcome to part two of me doing a full face of makeup products that are multi-use aka they can serve more than one purpose in your makeup routine we're moving on to eyeshadow and i'm so excited about this one we're gonna use the create paints from painted and i have kind of a look in mind for this and for that we're gonna use blue white and brown and you could use these literally for anything in your makeup routine they have so many more colors and you could use it as like concealer or blush like literally whatever the fuck you want so i'm gonna place the light blue towards my inner corner i am gonna blend this out just bear with me wow that is so beautiful then i'm gonna take a light brown and start blending it into the blue very fucking carefully okay wow 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 for mascara, the only thing I could think of is use the Create Paint in black and then kind of like brush it onto my lashes because it technically dries down to matte and doesn't budge so I feel like we could use it as a mascara array I'm gonna curl my eyelashes first and then we're gonna try something here I'm gonna load it onto the brush I'm just gonna swipe it through my lashes Oh, that's working. I am kind of a genius for that. And this thing is keeping my curl. For a lip liner, we're gonna go in with Lip Tinted in shade Grounded. This is a lip, cheek, and eye thing. And we used this for my bronzer earlier. And for lipstick, we're also gonna go in with Lip Tinted, but this one is in shade Perk. This combo is so pretty. And setting my face with this 4-in-1 setting spray from earlier by Beauty Blender. And here's the final look. All of these products have served their purpose one way or another. Like the skin is giving. The eye is giving. The lip is giving. Welcome to part two of me doing a full face of Kosa's makeup. We're moving on to powder bronzer and we're going to go in with the Waves the Sun show. Let me tell you, if you're looking to be kissed by the sun itself, this is the product for you. But if you don't like a glowy bronzer, then this is a product not for you. For blush, we're gonna go in with the Kosa's most recent launch, which is their Blush is Life. We have shade Hype and Thrill. And you know what? I actually went to an event for these blushes and the CEO of Kosa's was um, like speaking there. And she actually said that these products are infused with like skincare benefits. And that's like why they have a baked formula. Oh my God, next thing we need is a baked highlighter somebody on kosa's team needs to hit me up because i'm full of ideas for brow products kosa's has four different ones we have clear brow gel not my favorite tinted brow gel it's okay the nano brow pencil also not my favorite because i don't really need to draw like individual hairs on my brows it's too thin for me and i love this one this is just the regular kosa's brow pencil for eyes the only eyeshadow palette that kosa's has is the kosa's undressed palette and you already know, this is very much up my alley. The mattes are beautiful in this palette. The shimmer though, no. Because this also doesn't have a mascara, so we're gonna have to apply something else. Okay, for my lips, this is honestly one of my go-to lip combos. We have two of the Kosa's uh, lip liners in shade Infinite and Supreme. I did like a little lip cuffing technique, so I put the lighter color in the middle and then the darker on the outer corners. Now for lips, please pay attention. We have a uh, shade Fantasy Life. And then we have, I think it's like their wet stick in shade Skinny Dip. And I put that right on top. And there you have it, a full face of Kosa's. Welcome to part two of us doing a full face of makeup that I hate but love the packaging of. We're moving on to powder and this might be the prettiest packaging like I've ever seen. It's from Florases and it is their like lavender powder. First of all, look at this freaking packaging. Like, are you kidding me? The powder on the other hand, I just don't really like lavender powders i think it's not my cup of tea and this one specifically like it's so hard to get out of that little fucking thing and even then when you set your face look what it does to it like this is so bad like honestly my face probably has never looked worse even from far away for bronzer we have this one from gucci i mean this looks absolutely gorgeous the bronzer on the inside though 
complete and not a garbage. Way too pigmented for a bronzer and applies very patchy onto, you see? And now you're gonna be sitting here for like 10 hours trying to blend this shit out. Even then it kind of just looks like I've been playing in the mud. For powder blush, we have another one from Florace's and this is the wrong color I grabbed. Please hold. This is a good one. Okay, this on the other hand looks absolutely stunning. This is also advertised as blush. There is not one skin tone in the world that this is going to be a blush for. Not one. There is absolutely zero. It's white. And before you say Yana is probably a powder, then why do they advertise it on the back as blush? It literally says blush right there. So make that make sense. But beautiful packaging though. Another one from Florace's. This is also a blush. It's a little bit darker, but it's still way too light for me which is why i personally don't like it there's definitely somebody with a skin tone that this blush is gonna work on that someone is just not me i actually don't think my makeup has ever looked worse on the internet for our brows we're gonna go in with these new milk makeup high roll brow tints i love the way they look very beautiful i just think the product on the inside is way too messy it's so easy to mess up your brows with this it's like scary like you see i didn't even do anything and right there it's already a mess for our eyeshadow we're gonna go in with this one from kaleidos i mean look at this it's literally embroidered and it's like soft like how cool is that the colors on the inside though that is uh, a no for me this color palette gives me like nothing i just feel like these colors make me look rather ill for mascara, I honestly don't have a one that I like the packaging but dislike the mascara. So I'm just gonna use my normal one. For a lipstick, you already know we're gonna go in with Skin by Kim. The packaging of this, I do like. It's very sleek and simple. The product on the inside is a no for me. I'm gonna go in with a lip liner in shade Nude 02 and lipstick in shade Nude 01. I literally look like I've been raised from the dead even from far away and you might think this is a bronzer but i'm here to tell you that this is meanwhile i'm out here talking shit about the serum bronzer saying that it's too light and liquidy this can be used as a bronzing serum now the pump at the top starting to make sense to me meanwhile you can use it as a regular bronzer i have seen a lot of people loving it as like a bronzing drop and that is genius and now I also understand why it looks literally glowy like a highlighter of sorts. I don't have any kind of bronzing drops or anything on my face right now. So let's apply this and see what it's going to give. Because I am intrigued and terrified right now. I'm going to blend it out with a fluffy brush. That's how I usually blend out my bronzing drops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that actually looks so pretty. Do you see like the difference in my skin? Okay, you guys clearly are always right. And it doesn't blend out patchy like some of the bronzing drops. Bronzer, no. Bronzing drop, yes. My skin literally looks so good. Welcome to part two of us doing a 2016 makeup look. So far, the eyes have slayed. Now for the face makeup, we're about to be the most full coverage you probably have ever seen me. Okay, for the primer, we're gonna go in with Milk Hydro Grip. For foundation, we're gonna go into the classics, Max Studio Fix. Okay, I don't know if this is gonna be my color, but that's the only color I have of this foundation, so it's gonna have to do. Wow, that is coverage. For concealer, once again, one of the most full coverage concealer I own. This one is from ABH. Oh, the skin is skinning. For bronzer, I'm gonna go in with Too Faced and we're gonna do like a lot of it. Now this kind of pains me, but there wasn't a lot of blush back in 2016. We're still gonna do blush, but we're just kind of gonna do a lot of it and we're gonna do this like muted pink or mauve, I don't know. To set my face, we're gonna use this Hourglass setting powder. I want something like super matte. And then we're gonna set the rest of my face with this Makeup Forever HD powder. I feel like my skin is looking so smooth, it's like almost looks fake. <laughs> to add some more bronzer, we're gonna go in with this Estee Lauder powder bronzer. And then I'm gonna add the tiniest little bit of this powder blush on top. 
We're gonna add a blinding Dior highlighter on top. Like a lot of it. I'm gonna finish off my lower lash line. For lipstick, we're gonna go in with the Eve Liquid lipsticks. This one's from Fenty in shade Truth Fairy. I feel like back in 2016, liquid lipsticks is like the only thing anybody wore. Okay, this color is definitely giving very much 2016 in like the best way possible. Wow, I feel like I don't even recognize myself. Honestly, I feel like I love it. This is definitely core 2016 makeup look though. Like you cannot tell me otherwise. Welcome to part two of me doing a full face of makeup where I am using makeup products that aren't meant for that makeup step. AKA we use liquid eyeshadow for bronzer and uh, lip tint for blush. We're now moving on to powder bronzer. And for that, I'm gonna use this painted palette and uh, we're gonna use shade cookie dough. We're using eyeshadow for bronzer in case you haven't figured that out. I'm gonna pop it out so when I put my ginormous brush in here, it, I don't pick up the colors around it. That honestly might be a bit too light for bronzer, but eyeshadows are usually like pigmented, so let's still try it. Mm. I'm gonna try UV Index shade instead. I feel like this one's gonna be way better. Oh my god, I'm scared. Okay, I feel like that's enough. Otherwise, I'm gonna go overboard, and we definitely don't want that. I feel like for powder blush, the only choice we have is also an eyeshadow. So I'm gonna go in with this pink one from the same palette. That's so pretty. Dare I say it, one blush is enough because this looks quite perfect. Okay, for highlighter, we're gonna do something different. Uh, we're gonna use the Body Glow from Kylie Cosmetics. This one is in shade 300. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand and then I'm gonna pick it up with my Beauty Blender and dab it onto my cheeks. Wait, that's actually so pretty. Okay, I think for the brows, we have to go back into this eyeshadow palette because this color might be my perfect, no, this color mixed with this one might be my perfect brow color. I don't fucking know, brow colors are so very specific. Is that a good color? I feel like, yeah. These brows aren't giving me what I need them to be. I just line my brows and I'm gonna prime my eyelids with just some foundation. For our eyeshadow, of course, first we're gonna be going in with bronzer. Towards the inner corner, I'm gonna go in with this Kosas blush and we're gonna add a little bit of pink. I'm also gonna go in with these two blushes. Okay, this Dior blush is doing my eyeshadow some justice. And for our shimmer, I'm gonna use this highlighter from Fenty Beauty. For mascara, the only choice I have are these like brow gels. These are both tinted, but they're not dark enough. We're just gonna have to make it work. This is not working out that well. I'm actually gonna go in with this one from Milk Makeup because this is a darker one. Okay, that's actually working so well, what? For my lip liner, I'm gonna use cream contour. Okay, it's looking kind of wet and shiny. I'm gonna set it with some eyeshadow. I think this is the best we could get. For lipstick, obviously we're going in with blush. This one's from Persona Cosmetics in shade Bloom. Now, to set my face, the options are limited. The only thing I could think of is this Kosas Plump and Juicy Spray on Serum. It's technically meant for like a skincare product, but we're gonna use it to set our face. Honestly, don't know how we got here, but I feel like it looks good. The only thing that's throwing me off is the brows. I absolutely hate them. Welcome to part two of me doing a full face of makeup where every single packaging has to be a twist. We're moving on to highlighter and I'm gonna go in with this Dior glowy like blush slash highlighter. I'm just gonna put it on the back of my beauty blender and kind of like lightly dab it onto my cheeks. Now for the brows, the only brow product that with like a twist is like brow gels. So we're gonna go in with Glossier Boy Brow. I'm gonna line my brows with this Rare Beauty Eye Brightener. Now for the eyeshadows, we have a lot of twisty cream eyeshadows. Kind of have an urge to do like a white eyeshadow with like a lot of sparkle to kind of match the look. Okay, so I have the white all over the lid. Now I'm just gonna add a shit ton of glitter. Mmm, this is new. I think I like it, I don't know. For mascara, we're gonna go in with the Tarte Tarte Lit Mascara. Okay, after applying mascara, I think it's growing on me. For lip liner, I like literally could not find anything that has a twist. So we're gonna go in with this Sashel, I think that's what it's called, Sashu, whatever, like this viral lip stain thing. It's like a lip liner stain. I mean, you know, you've seen this everywhere. Now we wait until we can peel this off. Okay, I think it's dry. Oh, ooh. 
and that's a really pretty color and then for my lipstick instead of like actually going over the lipstick we're gonna go in with the new summer fridays iced coffee lip balm the only thing i don't like about these lip liners they like don't blend well so you could like really see the line but from like further away it does look pretty for the setting spray the only thing i could find that's like a twist is this mac fix plus because you kind of twist it to unlock it this thing has such a strong spray i am drenched okay i am literally obsessed with this look i don't know what it is about it but i love it Katie Poopy Perry, I'm deeply offended. You got some explaining to do. Just real quick question. What are you doing working with Dr. Fucking Luke? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? One thing about me, I will ride or die for my girl Kesha. I will ride or die for my girl Kesha. So for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, way back when, when Kesha was making all those fucking bops, 2007, 8, 9, 10, etc. He was working with a man named Dr. Luke. And then y'all remember when Kesha took that hiatus for like, I don't know, 8, 9, maybe 10 years, however long it was. That's because she was in a legal battle with our man, Dr. Luke. And if you don't know about this, trigger warning for like literally everything. He like drugged and assaulted Kesha like repeatedly, like repeatedly over the course of like years so i'm a little iffy on the details here but basically kesha was like i don't want to work with you anymore and dr luke was like too fucking bad you can't break our contract and he was like well you know if you break our contract like you won't be able to make music anymore and that's why kesha was on that hiatus for so fucking long so allegedly Katy perry reached out to kesha and she was like hey dr luke did that to me too and kesha was like holy shit what the fuck and so when all the court proceedings and everything was happening kesha was like hey Dr. Luke did this to Katy Perry too, and Katy Perry was like, I, I never said that, I never said that, and you can't say that I said it because I never said that. And like, I just want to throw in my two cents here really quick, just my personal opinion. On Kesha specifically, like, I don't think that she was lying. I mean, Kesha was at the top of her fucking game, bitch. She was at the top of the charts, and she knew that if she proceeded with this court case, all of that was going to go in, in the fucking trash, which... It, it kind of did. Why would you throw away your entire career when you're at the top of your fucking game for nothing? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And personally, I think that Katy Perry was just like, I don't want nothing to do with that. I don't want nothing to do with don't tie my name to that. I want to keep my career, which understandable as fuck. This is where I'm confused. I read an article yesterday talking about Katy Perry's new album and how it's, it's about women empowerment. The whole fucking album is literally about women empowerment. Why the fuck is it produced with Dr. Lou? And I guess Katy Perry's whole team was like, do not work with him on this album and she was like <laughs> allegedly of course even though his name is quite literally on the album then to make it even better when the news broke that fucking what the fuck's his face is doing katie perry's album for her kesha tweets out lol and you know what bitch real lo fucking l girl lo fucking l because nothing is literally nothing is funnier than making an entire album your whole fucking comeback album about women's empowerment and dr luke is producing get the fuck <laughs> You know what's even crazier? I have not seen a single soul talk about this other than the news articles that I've read. Lady Gaga was brought up a couple times. Don't really know what the fuck that's about. But nonetheless, this, this shit is strange, bitch. Super strange. Why are you insisting on working with Dr. Luke? I don't know. I like, I'm missing something. I'm missing something, obviously. I know two things. I know that I'm confused and I really want Miss Katie Poo Poo Perry to come out here and explain what the fuck is going on. The other thing is, if she don't, I ain't listening to her jank ass album. FM radio ain't going, ain't doing nothing for me. I'm gonna throw up a couple screenshots of some of the articles that I read where I was just like, what the fuck is this? But yeah, um, I'm really offended. Um, I, I'm literally a ride or die for Kesha. I, if Kesha told me to go lay out in the middle of the road, I would. I would do it proudly. I would do it proudly because no one is fucking with my girl Kesha. Kesha, you're probably not watching this, but if, if you are and you need me, girl, I'm there. Girl, I'm there. Girl, I'm there. Anyway, this shit crazy. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Don't knock it until you try it. This girl has been all over my For You page the last week with her crazy makeup routine. And if you say you haven't seen it, I literally don't believe you. She says all she uses is face oil and blush. So I'm going in with my Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Face Oil, my Bosma blush. I'm going to go in with my Beauty Blender. If it's oh, that's really red. I'm pretty sure she does like her entire face. I'm not going to lie. I'm scared. There's a good chance that our skin tones aren't the same. So this might not work for me. You know what? Let's put it on my eyelids too. Why not? <laughs> What the fuck is going on? 
In other words, this is some really good blush, guys. Very pigmented. My skin just ends up turning just fucking pink. I'm gonna feel some type of way. I will say, I ruined two beauty blenders today. <laughs> I might have to go take a full body shower after this. I'm gonna lie and say that I don't see it coming together. I do. I've gone through like 40 pumps of this foundation so far. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to a brush. Maybe if I could buff it out with the brush, it'll look better. I don't hate it. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, this might actually be doing something now. I think I might have more foundation on my skin than William and Meredith combined. Now, regardless of the fact that I look like a fucking glazed donut and I need to powder my face immediately, it matches my neck. I walked into this fully expecting this not to work on me. <laughs> and it fucking did, bitch. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup now. And I'm like, I'm pleasantly surprised. I was, I thought I was about to get on here, look like a fucking clown, and then get off. I actually don't think my makeup has ever looked this good. That is crazy. This is insane. My hair looks crazy. That's what's fucking crazy. Girl, you ate this up. You ate this up. I was not expecting this to work on me. 12 out of 10. Would would try this method again. Would use it again. I think you guys should try out this method and see if it fucking works for you. I think that you just like unlocked something. See, I say that and then I know people are gonna be like, you never heard of color correction before, you dumb bitch. Like, listen. Wow. 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 All right. That was a crazy experience I just had. I'll see you guys later. Gypsy Rose deleted her Instagram account. Let me go ahead and give my two cents where it is not wanted nor appreciated. Somebody had posted about her deleting her account. Like the nosy person I am, I was reading the comments. I would like to know why she deleted her Instagram account. Somebody was like, oh, she deleted her account because they found her out and they're trying to cancel her. You know how fucking silly that shit sounds. And now before y'all decide to cancel me for what I'm about to say, let me just say this. I love Jip Jip. I love Jip Jip Rose. I wish her nothing but peace and prosperity. Y'all really put a convicted murderer on this weird little pedestal as soon as she got out of jail and just expected her to like be grateful for this weird pedestal that everybody put her on and like as far as we know she didn't even want this type of life when she got out of jail you guys put a convicted murderer on this pedestal and was shocked when she didn't act the way everybody expected her to act so now people are trying to cancel gypsy rose for what she did ma'am she just spent how many years in jail what are we canceling her for genuinely like i'm i'm actually confused why is everyone so mad about it you're mad that a convicted felon didn't act the way you wanted them to act straight out of jail i'm not gonna sit here and act all high and mighty as if i wasn't part of the gyp chip train i was i was but i also knew that she was a fucking convicted felon but what could she have done that she didn't do already you guys pushed her so much that she had to deactivate or delete her instagram account that's so bizarre like trying to cancel gypsy rose is not only insanely bizarre to me but in my head just feels so disrespectful to her like i feel like everybody hyped up her release date she got out everyone was like oh my god gypsy gypsy you guys made her like this famous social media star she tried to be what everybody wanted her to be and that wasn't good enough everyone just like fed her to the wolves all right that's probably my first and only video i'll ever make on my girl jip jip all right bye are you shocked that this is the third video i'm making trying to make these elf cream eyeshadows work because i'm not they're shit <laughs> let's try them again i'm gonna take all the tips and suggestions that everybody has told me to do and we're gonna see if we can make these not look like shit shit on me in the first one for not using eye primer and in the second video when i did use eye primer everyone shit on me for not using eye primer even though i was using eye primer <laughs> Now, PSA about my skin, because you're probably looking at it right now and being like, Lexi, what the fuck is wrong with your face? Because my skin usually doesn't look like this, but I've been having an eczema outbreak on and off for like a month, so bear with me. Alright, we're going back in with this white one. Again, using my fingers, because y'all bitched at me for using a brush. I'm gonna pat this in with my fingers and blend it in. Also, somebody told me, they were like, your eyelids are dry, that's why it's drying down like that. My eyelids could not be greasier, bitch. My eyelids are not dry. And then everyone was like, oh, you have creasy eyelids, so it's doing that. Creasy in your eyelids are not gonna make your eyeshadow look like shit if you're doing it the right way and i've been doing this shit for fucking years now so as you can see there's just like this fucking harsh ass line that i can't blend out and i just put it on so you know what it's gonna have to stay like that look it it's already looking like shit it's not my fault it's not it's not my eyelids fault it's literally the product of shit so not everyone's like you need to put a white powder on
on top of it. I'm using my Morphe palette, bitch. Using my Morphe Essentials, whatever the fuck this palette's called. I'm taking my white and I'm packing it on. And I'm even using this little dense packer brush to make sure that this eyeshadow is packed on. So I don't want to hear anybody say, I should you put enough eyeshadow on. I can't put any more on than I'm putting on right now, okay? And then some people had the audacity to be like, she's lying. I use this all the time and it never looks like that on me. Good for you, bitch. Good for- what do you want me to say? Good for you! I- I wish- I wish it could do that to me as well, but unfortunately, it fucking can't. So, now that this eye is done, because y'all have the audacity to be like, You're working too slow. It took me like, fucking 12 seconds to do this shit. So I guess that's too slow. So I'm gonna start on this side now. And if you have to jump through all these fucking hoops, just to make a cream eyeshadow work, Bitch, it's not a good cream eyeshadow. Like, fuck, do you see that? It's disgusting. I can't even, like, wipe it away. <laughs> yeah, I've been sitting here for, like, maybe three minutes trying to fix that, and it's just gonna have to fucking look like that, because literally, no matter what I do, I keep taking this shit out of the pot and putting it on, and no matter what I do, like, it just looks like shit. There's one thing about this cream eyeshadow is, it's not gonna blend. And if it does, you have, like, maybe four and a half seconds to blend it. Okay, I finished. Um, ignore this right here because I tried to blend it out. It didn't want to, but regardless, um, it's still gross looking. It's still like, I even set it with the powder and it's still separating up here. Like, it's just, it looks like pizza crust. This shit sucks, bitch. It sucks. Don't buy this. And hopefully, this is the third and last video I will be making about these elf, no budge, cream eyeshadows. <laughs> I hate this shit. I'm never buying it again. Goodbye. After the weekend I had, I genuinely do not believe that girls, girls exist anymore. I'm like shaking <laughs> thinking about this story, bro. So I'm out this weekend with this guy that like I'm kind of dating, but kind of not. Like I'm trying. I'm out with him and his friend. So I think it was like the seven of us went out and I was the only girl in this group, right? And his friends are talking about how they invited girls to the function that they were going to. I was like, word, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go find the girly. I love hanging out with the girlies. I love finding the girlies at the function and hanging out with them. I'm telling you, I've never had an experience like this before. So we pull up. I find the girlies, right? I try talking to them. They want nothing to do with me. Babe, they're pretending like I'm not even there. I'm like, word, you know what? Say less. So I'm like, whatever, it's not that deep. I'm not gonna take it personally. So I turn around and I start chit-chatting with the people that I initially came there with. So after about an hour of me chit-chatting with these people, this one girl comes over and she sits down next to me. And for the sake of the story, I'm just gonna call her A. So just for some context, A showed up with this other girl, I'm gonna call her B. So A sits down next to me, and she's like, yeah, like, I showed up with that girl over there. B, I'm like, yeah, I know, I watched you guys walk in, you guys look so cute, da 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 And in A's defense, when I did go over and try to talk to this group of girls, she was not there. So the one guy that was in our group, I'm just gonna call him Adam, Adam invited A and B to go out with us so anyway i had told her how cute i thought her and b looked when they like walked in i was like oh my god you guys look so cute da -da -da -da. you know just making small talk whatever and she's like oh my god thanks but like i can't fucking stand b like told adam i didn't want to come if he was gonna invite her too and she just proceeds to call this girl like a slur of names she called her a groupie bitch a fake hoe like the list goes on and on and on. so in my confusion i'm like wait you guys aren't friends you don't know her she's like oh no she's my best friend i was like that's crazy like do you hate her she's like yeah i actually do hate her and i wish that she wasn't here and i was like girl what the fuck that's actually crazy if she's your best friend why are you saying that stuff about her she's like because it's true and i was like well shit okay so her and i keep chit-chatting just because like who else am i supposed to talk to and i'm still talking to this girl and at this point we've been talking for like five hours every other word that comes out of her mouth is her talking shit about either the girl that she came with or the girls that are there she hates the people that are there so me and a are still talking like it's been about five hours the only people that her and i have talked to are each other and a looks at b from across the room and she goes do you see b's shoes and i was like yeah they're cute what about them she goes they're fake i think she said like balenciaga or something she's like yeah they're not real balenciaga she's too poor to afford real balenciagas i was like damn that's crazy because what honestly what the fuck am i supposed to say she's like do you see your sunglasses and i'm like yeah what about them she goes they're mine. He's too poor to afford real Prada sunglasses. What the fuck is going on? Sorry, I had to change my shirt. I'm like sweating my ass off right now. A gets up to like go pee or something. I don't remember. And B comes over and sits next to me. This is the first time her and I even- This is the first time I've spoke to like another girl the entire night. And she sits down next to me. She's like, are you having a good time? I'm like, yeah. I'm having- it's okay. I can't complain. How's your night? I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. She's like, isn't A such a fucking bitch? And I was like- 
Why do you say that? <laughs> What's going on? She's like, oh my god, I can't fucking stand her. Like, I wish that she would have just stayed home. Like, she's such a fucking bitch. And I was like, aren't you guys friends? She's like, yeah, she's my best friend. It was so weird. And then B, while A is gone, like, in the bathroom or whatever, just starts talking shit about A the same way A has been talking shit about B the entire night. I, like, hate the way my hair looks right now. Like, why the fuck does it look like this? And my hair doesn't look like this. Anyway, so you know what I did? I grabbed my shit and I left. Because, girl, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that was crazy. That was crazy. So then, a few days later, I see that A followed me on Instagram, right? And she still has pictures of her and B up. I think this was, like, two days ago. This morning when I decided I was going to make this video, I checked out her Instagram page again. All the pictures of her and B were gone. So, <laughs> I guess they're not friends anymore i don't fucking know um but genuinely um that whole situation instilled so much anxiety into my body and i left out a lot of details just for the sake of keeping people anonymous but holy shit guys girls aren't your friends girls are not your friends because as soon as you turn around they're gonna call you poor broke ugly a skank a groupie I don't think I've ever had an experience like that before. Shit was so odd. So odd. Okay. Bye. I'm going to show you how to do this eye look that I did last year. I wanted to do it again today. I just started. But I figured I'd take y'all along for the ride. So let me tell you what I did so far. I placed a white concealer down. I used the kimchi chic one. The white one. I just tried this for the first time. Really liked it. And I threw a white eyeshadow on top. Looking for a white eyeshadow genuinely is the hardest fucking thing in the entire world to do. So I'm using the Morphe 18 count matte essentials palette and i'm using this white shade up here in the top now we're gonna start out with a little wing map it out a little bit doesn't have to be perfect nothing about this look is gonna be perfect so you get like the basis of your wing and now we're just slowly gonna like loop it around a little bit like that like a little loop but really you can do whatever you want like you can loop this however you want to loop it girl which is one of my favorite things about this look you can literally do whatever you want to i'm gonna make my loop sharp at the end so see how i kind of got it like that i'm gonna connect this one to this one over here and make it a straight line like so and i'm gonna fill this in this look is time consuming the last time i did this it took me three and a half hours and now that i have like my little harpoon looking hook i'm just gonna take this and i'm just gonna drag it wherever i want to drag it drag it across here and loop it up again Nice, we got a nice little map. And now that I got this, I'm kind of just gonna finesse it a little bit. So I'm not really sure what the plan is. There's not really a plan, which is the fun part about all this. I can literally do whatever I want to. This is a little shape that we made so far. Looks crazy. I'm using the Kat Von D eyeliner, by the way. I just realized I didn't say that. Okay, I added a little bit onto it because I'm feeling crazy right now. All right, this looks good enough. Let's add some more lines. Let's try to go in here a little bit. And so now we have this basic shape. So now I'm just going to try to follow along with the flow that I have just made for myself. So I think I have this little crease right here in my eyelid. I think I'm going to connect this bottom tail into that so that I don't have to, you know, do a, a whole tail for that one. See, now I kind of have this little loop here, but when I open my eyes, see, it's kind of cute. Okay, this is what I put in the middle up here. I kind of just did like a little circle with the tail. Look, he kind of looks like a sperm, but we're going to fix it. Okay, cool. We did like this little swoop de do I think I'm just going to put a dot right here. Cool. I shit you not. Oh my god, it's been an hour and I cannot feel my legs. And I don't know, I kind of just feel like this side is empty and I need to put something there. So maybe I'll put like, I don't want to fuck it up though, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm, I'm just going to start with my inner corner and then see, see how I feel at the end. Let's do something fun with this. And you know what? I think I'm going to do what I did last time and add a little something in here. 
if my eyeliner worked, then maybe I would. I have to keep switching between eyeliners because not the eyeliner's fault. I'm just having these caps open for such a long time and the tips are drying out. Kind of just like connected this to this swoop and since it is in my crease, it's getting kind of messy. Even though I do feel like it kind of looks naked up here, I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna do this eye and I'll be right back. Oh, I'm back. We're finished. Um, I just added a little bit of these at the ends and the thing that I like about this look is that they don't have to be symmetrical they don't have to be perfect and it still kicks ass the look is the look still fucks that was my little that was my little tutorial i hope it was helpful if it wasn't i'm sorry i tried my best okay bye guys i know i look beat it's two o'clock in the morning this is the mask it's from medicube medicube as you can tell by how empty it is i've been using it a lot this is the collagen night wrapping mask just put it on your face before you go to bed and then when you wake up in the morning you just peel it off this is how i put mine on you want like a thick consistency on your face and i might put more on i like to use a lot of this product because i'm a crazy sleeper it's from my experience of using this mask the last few nights me personally more product is better so it's not like a hard mask it's like silicone oil almost i don't want to call it silicone but it's like a gel you know what i mean and i'm gonna do a little bit more i just really like when this is thick laid on got my little fan to make this dry faster this is supposed to hydrate your skin and like fight against wrinkles and it's supposed to make your skin glow and to be so honest and so real every single time i take this off my skin is absolutely glowing and again you'll see it in a second so in the meantime i'm gonna go to bed and i'll see you in the morning when we peel this baby off good morning i just woke up this looks crazy let's take it off Yeah, check out my skin. Doesn't it look so, like, glowy and nice? I love this face mask. Okay, that's everything. I just wanted to show you my face mask and that my skin looks really, really nice after leaving it on all night. Bye! So this is my new skincare routine that I've been doing for the last few weeks. I'm using these Vita C pads from Medicare, and now I'm using this glow serum. It's going to give my skin a very nice and pretty glow. Also smells really good. And now I'm using this collagen jelly cream. Not only does it look super pretty because it's pink, but it is so hydrating. And again, smells really good. Literally takes my skin from super dusty crusty to hydrated in seconds. And now I'm using this Booster Pro. This little light therapy it has five different modes, which is insane. Like, this is probably the craziest feeling I've ever felt in my face. You could tell that it's working while it's on. Like, my skin is pulsating, but it gets rid of wrinkles and acne and upcoming acne and all that stuff that nobody really wants on their face. But it feels so good on the skin you can definitely tell that my skin is hydrated and looking good and this is what my skin looks like at the end let's be honest if all men disappeared tomorrow shit would hit the fan do you think if all women disappeared shit wouldn't hit the fan it would not be good but like society would continue functioning men keep society functioning what about when men left and every woman became rosie the riveter shit didn't really hit the fan i assume you're talking about world war ii mm -hmm. i mean not all men went off to war but women did show up for the war effort so does not prove that women can rise to the occasion and do male-dominated jobs if the need arises. With the appropriate planning and time, but the specific scenario is if all women disappear or all men disappear, you wouldn't have the necessary time to introduce women into these critical fields. So men are vilified and undervalued because if you gave women 24 hours to resume society after their disappearance, we would need more time? I'm saying men don't get enough appreciation. There's too much vilification of men in society. It's it's cool to like shit on men from like typically feminists when it's because of men like electricians, people who work in infrastructure, transport, that society functions and these men are not appreciated. Sure, I just don't think feminists <laughs> undervalue that labor. A lot of them are socialists, they believe in unions, they believe in raising the minimum wage and that affects these guys who are electricians and the one doing the heavy manual labor. I had James Charles blocked on everything for as long as I can remember. Tell me why the fuck I'm scrolling on my For You page yesterday and I see him on another account. I haven't kept up with him and uh, since probably since by sister because that girl I didn't like him before by sister and I definitely didn't like him after I thought that all of us as fucking consumers are all under the same understanding that that man is a 
PDF file. When I tell you when I opened up the comments, I was shocked. And honestly, like, I'm confused as to when the fuck the, the script flipped. I opened up that comment section and all I saw was, Oh my god, I love you, James. Oh my god, you're so funny. Oh my god, I didn't know you had a second account. And I blocked that account too because what the fuck I want some PDF files face staring at me from my own phone screen. Now listen, I never rocked with Colleen Ballinger, not even in middle school, not in high school. I never thought that she was funny and all that shit came out and y'all stuck to it. Y'all stuck to it. She, I don't know if she's been making any content recently. I've never kept up with her, but every time I see something about her on social media, y'all are not, y'all don't forget. All that shit came out two, three years. I don't know how many years it's been. Y'all were quick to stick with it. Every time I see a video of her on my For You page, the comments hateful as fuck. Hateful. And rightfully so, because what the fuck? But y'all are so quick to switch up for somebody else. And it's it's nuts. It's nuts. Because in my head, they're on the same level. Y'all both fucking PDF files. The fuck? These are not good people. These people are not good people. And y'all are like, oh, like, these, these, you, got, you can't support these people. And then a fucking, a couple weeks go by, and y'all are just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Because uh, I'm going to keep using Colleen Ballinger as an example. Y'all would never forgive her, rightfully so. She doesn't deserve to be forgiven, in my opinion, because, girl, what the fuck? Maybe I'm missing something. If I'm missing something, feel free to let me know. Honestly, feel free to let me know because I'm fucking confused. Same shit with Gypsy Rose. Y'all hyped the fuck out of this woman for, like, six years. Oh my god, I can't wait for her to get out of jail. I can't wait for her to get out of jail. She didn't deserve to be in jail. She didn't deserve to be in jail. I can't believe they put her in jail for that long. She gets out, and now you guys are like, she's a bad person. She killed her mom. Where the fuck have you been? You know what? There's a really big difference between not liking, like, an influencer or a content creator because you don't like the content that they make versus not liking them because they're a criminal, bitch. I don't even know if what I'm saying is even making sense at this point i'm just like i'm just disappointed in the human race i don't because like these people aren't canceling themselves i mean debatable but realistically they're not canceling themselves we're canceling them i don't even remember what i was talking about and to be honest i probably don't even make any sense but i feel like you get the gist of what the fuck i'm saying oh y'all y'all be like no we ain't putting no pdf files on pedestals and then a couple months go by and then you put them back on the pedestal what was the point? James Charles is my favorite content creator. I'm not even trying to be a cunt, but like, dare I ask why? Like, why? What, what is, what's appealing? Like, I want to know what's appealing about it. This is the first I spoke about James Charles in over three years. And it's probably going to be the last because literally just saying his name makes my fucking teeth hurt. So on that note, what the fuck? Goodbye. Well, the other day I posted about these e.l.f. cream eyeshadows. I didn't really like them that much. And a lot of you gave me a lot of feedback, a lot of tips. But we're going to try these out again today and see if we can make it work. I want to match my makeup to my cute little Valentine's Day sweater. Some of you suggested using an eye primer, so that's what I'm going to do. Using the Kaleidos one, by the way. I'm going to pat that in with my finger. A lot of you suggested that I put the eyeshadow on directly with my finger. I'm going to go in with my knuckle hope that suffices let's go to town not looking too bad so far a lot of you also said i was working too slow i know on the video it looks like i'm taking longer but i just i feel like i wasn't taking that long enough of time for it to get chunky like that okay so i think this is looking pretty good so far i think we can make this work guys i like really hate to do this still looks crusty to me I don't know. I think that if we just ignore what's going on right here and I don't raise my eyebrows at all, we'll be fine. I'm gonna take some of this white, put it in my waterline. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. I finished my base. I haven't touched my eyes. Ooh. They're looking pretty cross. Taking a little bit of my red eyeliner. Guess what we're doing? Guess what we're making? Little fucking added a couple cute little red hearts do we love them i love them okay hearts are finished and now i think i'm gonna be ballsy and add some of that red liner to my bottom lashes would that be crazy would that be crazy so the look went a little rogue i got a little bit of the red eyeliner in my waterline and now my waterline is red instead of white now before i put my mascara on let's take a look at this real quick um still crusty as fuck the eyeliner did cover up a lot of it though but those 
Whew, those creases and those crumblies are a killer. Okay, makeup's done. One last up close crusty look, but then when you pull back, oh my god, different person. So cute. Your makeup looks so bomb. Matches your cute little sweater for Valentine's Day. Thank you. <laughs> my final rating for this is gonna be like six and i feel like i'm being generous with the six i would not recommend this this shit is so fucking hard to use um i feel like not even the most trained professional would be able to do fuck all with that don't worry not gonna go to waste i'm still gonna use it and use it for like cute little designs and eyeliner and stuff and whatever I think it's super cutesy cutesy little girly little valentine's day look okay i'll see you guys later bye